Hey friends, Doug Goodrich with Goodrich Aviation. A couple of years ago, we did a BRS parachute installation video with a Cessna 172. And it was a neat project because we not only installed the parachute, but we also did a complete Airtex interior job. And so it turned out really nice and it was a sharp project. And a lot of people have watched that, um, including our friends at BRS. Now, when it comes to the 172, in the 182 and the BRS uh, retrofit systems for those two airplanes, BRS sells a lot more systems into the 182 platform versus the 172. So they asked me if I would do another video that shows more detail on the 182 installation. And this is that video. So we're excited to produce this video and we're gonna take you through step-by-step -step the system show you a couple of things that you want to think about if you're considering putting a uh, BRS into your 182 and uh, then show you all the stuff that's involved there and show you the process that we go through for installing one of these things. And then at the end, we'll talk about how to uh, get a BRS uh, uh, parachute installed in your airplane and uh, some of the features of it and the main reason why to install one of these uh, systems into your 182. So come along and we'll show you how this all works. Thanks. So this right here is the basic kit that comes in a couple of boxes. Uh, it takes special shipping because of the explosives here. The, uh, the rocket itself is down here. And um, you know, it comes as a very nice, well-packaged, well-laid out kit. This is your propellant. So like a, uh, uh, the, the, the rocket you used to have when you were a kid, it's uh, similar, but just a lot bigger. Um, this is the actual rocket itself. Propellant goes right inside here. Um, and uh, you have your fairings here that go over the top of the airplane. And we're gonna be talking about those and how important um, antennas and different things are uh, working around these fairings. You've got your crossover brace that's gonna go between the sides of the airplane in the back here, that's going to be your main structure um, that uh, keeps the the, um, uh, the basically the the chute itself mounts to. So we also have these plates here that um, we're going to mount to the inside of the fuselage in the baggage area, and uh, this is going to carry the weight of the rear of the airplane if the chute is deployed. So you'll see how those things go on. It's kind of a cool system. You've got your handle cover here. Your handle here, this is going to go right up behind the um, fuel selector on a Cessna. So uh, lots of hardware. And um, the great thing about this whole kit here is actually the manual right here. It's an excellent manual. It's easy to follow. has a lot of great pictures that uh, just help uh, uh, with the whole process of understanding step-by-step -step how this thing's going to go. So they have a really good manual uh, uh, with the, the system. Um, I did want to show one other thing too. Um, you've got straps here. These are your Kevlar straps that are going to go up and fasten to the, um, uh, the main attachment bolt for your wing. So you'll see how we get these things on the airplane. So overall, this is the, uh, the kit, and uh, now it's time to put this in there. If you're thinking about installing a BRS parachute in your 182, there's a couple of really important things to consider. Um, the first one we'll talk about is the condition of the rear window. Um, we are going to put a strap right down here that you're going to see and a cover fairing, and we actually go right through the rear window. Once all of the parachute uh, items are installed, replacing this rear window is going to be a challenge. It's not impossible by any means, but it's going to be a challenge. If the condition of your rear window um, is not the best, then I would really uh, encourage you to replace it before you have the chute installed or we've done a number of these um, when, uh, during the installation process. So it's something to, uh, to think about. We're gonna be right back here working so we can put a rear window in very, very easily during the uh, installation process of the parachute. So it probably save you a little labor versus having your own uh, guy do it because uh, we're going to be right here taking all the stuff apart in the middle of all of this. But you are going to want to consider the condition of your re rear window. Um, the interior plastic, especially the plastic that goes from the, um, the, the back door, from, from the side door aft, that, those side uh, window pieces and the plastic that is around all the baggage area. We have to make some modifications with that. 
And if your 182 has really poor plastic, um, you know the kind, the old Cesta plastic that's probably never been replaced since the 70s or 80s, and if you touch it, it crumbles in your hand, that kind of plastic, um, this would be the time to get that uh, upgraded because, again, that's going to be difficult to change some of that plastic out after the BRS parachute is installed, and we actually have to modify some of it around the parachute, so we have to deal with it, and if it's old and crumbly, it uh, doesn't work very well. So um, we've put a lot of uh, new plastic into airplanes when we're doing these installs. So if that's something you need, you can talk to us about it, but it's certainly something to consider. Um, another important thing to consider is the STC requires rear seat shoulder harnesses to be installed in the airplane. So if you've got a 182 and you're going back a few years, you may not have rear seat shoulder harnesses already installed. And um, we, can install those right during the uh, the installation. It's not something you have to go out and get in advance. Um, we give a pretty good deal on the whole thing, plus the labor. We just install them uh, during the whole process. We don't even charge extra for the installation because we deal with all of that back here during the installation process. So um, if you don't have the rear shoulder harnesses, we can install them during the, uh, the chute installation. So it's something to keep in mind if you have them then we just take them out, do all the structure work, and then put them right back in again. So the other thing to keep in mind when you're considering a BR parachute is this real estate across the top of your airplane. We're going to be hooking the straps to the wing uh, bolt right underneath here and uh, coming up through the skin, carrying the straps over to the center and, very, and then uh, down through the, the center of the uh, uh, of the fuselage. And they're gonna be covered with these fairings here. You can see you've got two fairings. There's actually a total of three fairings um, that we're gonna install to cover over the Kevlar straps. Um, and so you can see that if you've got uh, a GPS antenna or a traffic antenna or something else that's gonna be in the center section right here, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Now, we've relocated lots of antennas. So it's not that big of a deal. We charge a little bit extra if we have to relocate an antenna. But I want to put it in this video because if you're thinking about an avionics upgrade or something else, um, and then a chute installation down the road in the future, um, ask your shop not to install an antenna in this center uh, forward section here across the top and then down through the very center section here. So you can see here we've got an, an OAT probe, um, but that's not gonna be a factor um, in this installation uh, at all. So, so we're fortunate with this one, we don't have to move any antennas, but it's really common that we do have to move antennas. Uh, people like to especially put GPS antennas right here because they can take the speaker um, and upholstery in the center of the headliner down and access that very easily right there. So it often gets a GPS antenna uh, right there. This is a G1000 airplane. Um, so all of that stuff's already been located in other places. So we don't have to worry about those antennas um, on this one. A lot of 430 upgrades and things like that, they end up with a GPS antenna right there. So we just relocate that to the, um, to the outside. It's not a big deal and we end up covering over the whole um, that's left there. So it's usually not a problem at all, but it's one of those things to keep in mind if you're considering a BRS parachute installation for your Cessna. So when we get started with a BRS installation, one of the first things we do is check the aileron rigging. We check the deflection and also the tension on the cables uh, because we have to deal with the, uh, the aileron uh, pulley that is right here at the wing root. So this is one of the, uh, the forward straps, and um, it's actually gonna go right through the top of the skin right here and attach underneath the main wing bolt. In order to get that main wing bolt out, we have to remove this pulley that is buried right here. And in different airplanes, um, it's, it's okay to get to. In other airplanes, it can be a real bear to get in there and get that pulley loose uh, because of the keepers that are around it and such. But uh, we let the tension off of the crossover cable for the aileron system uh, to loosen that up. And then we have to pull that pulley out in order to get this bolt out. 
and on some installations also, we even have to uh, trim a little bit of the, uh, the window right here that's covered with a wing root fairing, but uh, we have to trim some of the plastic off in order to get that wing bolt out. So those are some of the early steps that we do before we start the installation process. And one other thing to add to all of that is um, we always defuel the airplane because you'll see in a little while when we go to install this bracket and pull those bolts out, um, we have to kind of manhandle the wing and uh, it's certainly a lot easier when there's no fuel in the, uh, in the wing. So um, it's one of the things we always ask our customers to do when they bring their airplanes to us to don't bring them with too much fuel because uh, we have to defuel the airplane as the very first step of this whole installation process. So before we start uh, modifying the back of the airplane for the cross piece and uh, these adding these steel structures to the side of the airplane, I wanted to show you what it looks like uh, right out of the factory. You can see the, uh, uh, the green primer here and these pieces here that are aluminum that we're going to be uh, drilling out. Um, your seatbelt uh, mount hole is right here. And uh, we're going to take that whole thing out and put this in and uh, we'll show you uh, what that process looks like. So once the plane is prepped and ready for the installation, we start with the locations that we attach the chute to the aircraft. And uh, here at the forward section, we, um, we use these Kevlar straps that are right here. And uh, we start by defueling the wing. Uh, we have uh, unhooked and uh, removed the pulley, the aileron pulley that's right here. Um, then we, uh, we cut a hole right here at the top of the wing skin, right above the rear section of that big old bolt that holds the wing to the fuselage. And um, uh, we, we drive that bolt out, we put a new bolt in, and then we attach the bracket that's attached to this Kevlar strap here, and then put the nut on that, tighten it all down, and now this Kevlar strap is securely fastened to the aircraft right underneath the main uh, wing attachment bolt uh, that's, that's, that's right underneath the skin right here. So um, you can kind of see how important this, this, this area is right here across the, the front of the fuselage and down through the center. We talked about uh, um, antennas and uh, things like that and, and how they have to be relocated if they're in this area. And you can see now why. So the, the uh, Kevlar strap here is inside of a, a plastic baggie like uh, it's, a, it's a plastic sheath and uh, that protects it from moisture and things like that. Um, and we have laid uh, uh, double-sided tape across here and then two pieces right down through the center section. And then we put the, um, the, the Kevlar um, straps inside the baggies. We just, we've tacked them right down through here. Uh, we do this nifty little fold and then head right down through the center section of the, uh, of the aircraft. So you can kind of see now how these straps are attached to the aircraft. Our next step here is going to be to install these covers that we have painted in our paint booth to match the aircraft. And they're gonna go right over top here. We're going to RTV them in place, um, put a whole bunch of weights and things on them to hold them down. And then once they're secured, we're going to uh, tape off 
uh, all around the outside of them and seal the edges all the way around with a nice neat uh, silicone job around there. There's a couple more uh, fairings that go down through the, uh, the rest of the center there. So, so this is the forward attachment. Uh, let's take a look at the rear attachment, how that works on the aircraft. So climbing here into the baggage door, we've made several modifications here to the uh, back of the aircraft. The first thing you can see here is we have the two Kevlar straps that are hanging here waiting to get attached to the parachute itself, which is going to be setting right here. And um, so they're here, they've come down through over the top of the airplane and actually penetrated through a, a, a slot that we've cut in the uh, rear window. And uh, so they're hanging here ready to get attached. You can see we have the end of the, uh, the, the, the uh, cable that uh, is for deploying the parachute. It actually is going to be the thing that, uh, that launches the rocket. This hooks to the T-handle in the uh, front of the aircraft. And then we have this right here, this crossover brace. And uh, you've seen in some of the earlier pictures, um, the, uh, the, the brackets that we have installed here and behind me here, um, the steel brackets that are going to be the, uh, the main bearer of the weight. The actual chute itself is going to install right here and right behind me right here. That's going to be the load carrying um, uh, location for the rear um, straps for the parachute. This spreader bar right here keeps the fuselage held out correctly. Um, you know, it's a, it's a spreader bar. Um, and then it's also going to be the, uh, uh, the thing that the uh, parachute itself straps to right here. So uh, we've got all this um, installed here and you can kind of see why uh, we often ask about the condition of the interior plastic. We have to do some, some trimming here and then the 172 installation, it's a little different. Um, but uh, picture this, you know, a 70s or 80s vintage uh, uh, high wing Cessna 172, 182. And, uh, you know, it's got the old plastic in it. And uh, some people bring us those airplanes and uh, the plastic is just so brittle and hard to work with. Um, we've, we've set up almost another business just installing new plastic in the, uh, the back of uh, in some of these, uh, these older uh, Cessna aircraft. Because, you know, picture with a chute sitting right here. Um, any kind of work that you do back in here is going to be really, really difficult once that parachute is installed. So it's a good time to, uh, to assess the condition of your baggage area plastic uh, before you install one of these, uh, these parachutes. And um, uh, we've gotten pretty good at uh, cutting and fitting and doing all the, um, uh, the, the, the plastic work uh, necessary in the back of all of these uh, newer 182s like this one and even a lot of the, uh, the older ones uh, that we've, we've worked with. So it's something to keep in mind. But uh, uh, so now you're uh, able to see a little bit of what we've done back here for the attachment of the parachute to the, um, to the aircraft itself.
All right, so we finished up this BRS parachute installation in this 182. And I thought before I signed off, I'd go over a couple of important things. One, how the um, system actually operates. And second, why you might want to consider one of these for your 182. And the third, how do you get one if you do want one? So let's talk about the operation first. To deploy the system, there's a handle which we've installed in the front of the airplane uh, right on the floor right next to the, or right behind the fuel selector. And the operation would simply be pull the mixture uh, to kill the engine and then take the cover off and then pull the red handle up. And uh, you can explain that to all of your passengers uh, when they get in the airplanes to show them how easy it is uh, to deploy the system. Um, and then once that handle's deployed, the rocket is going to launch. It's literally gonna blow out the rear window here um, and it's gonna take the, um, uh, the, the parachute out in kind of like a big streamer behind the aircraft. It's going to begin to deploy, and uh, what's gonna keep it from just completely deploying in an instant and probably pulling itself right off of the airplane is a slider, which is on the, the uh, suspension lines uh, right at the base of the parachute. And so that's going to begin to slide down those suspension lines and allow the parachute to inflate slowly. Um, and then there's another interesting piece of all of this. Um, on the rear strap, there's actually a doubled up section. The purpose of that is to take the airplane under, when it's under canopy, from a kind of level uh, attitude to a tail down landing gear first attitude. So that doubled section is released by this little thing right here. It's called a line cutter. And it's kind of an ingenious little operator. Um, it's a pyrotechnics uh, system that uh, is uh, uh, started when the system launches. Um, and it's a timer is basically what it is. So it sizzles for a few seconds and then there's a chopper right inside here. And it cuts a line and allows that doubled section in the rear strap to release, allowing the tail to come down so that you're gonna hit on your main wheels. That's basically how the system operates. So why would you want one of these in your aircraft? You know, over the several years that we've been installing these, it's really become apparent that uh, peace of mind is the number one reason. Whether it's for your own safety or the safety of uh, the people with you, um, if you're concerned something might happen to you as the pilot and the other people in the aircraft wouldn't know how to, uh, to land the plane, this system gives amazing peace of mind. Um, we've had several customers that are airline pilots that just are terrified by the idea of flying a single engined aircraft at night. And so they have us put a, uh, a BRS parachute in their aircraft. We've had some other people who are maybe getting up in years and uh, they might be concerned about their health. So they wanna know that their family, friends, passengers are going to be safe if something were ever to happen to them. So. Basically, the parachute equals peace of mind, and it's really the number one reason why people put these in their 182s. One more thing that I should address with the BRS installation is its weight. The system weighs 85 pounds, um, so you are gonna take a little bit of a hit to your useful load, but it does shift the CG back a couple of inches, which makes the plane uh, nicer for, for your flare. Um, so most people don't mind how the plane performs, but uh, you do take a little bit of a hit on the, on the useful load. Now, if you've decided that a BRS system is the right move for you and your 182, the easiest way to get one of these is just to give me a call. My contact information is below and I'd be happy to answer all of your questions uh, regarding the system. Um, if you might be interested in some new plastic or even a new AirTex interior, we've gotten really good at installing those because we do a bunch of them when we do the parachute installations. So if you have questions about uh, that kind of installation along with your BRS system, um, just give me a call. I'll go over that, get you a quote, and um, we can go from there. The installation time on our end is only about two weeks. And obviously if we do other work, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but just a straight BRS installation like what we've done on this airplane only takes a couple of weeks. Um, getting the systems right now, it's taking a little bit longer. Um, we'll see BRS, the, their times vary. Uh, so give me a call and I'll let you know how long it would take to, uh, uh, from the time you place an initial deposit to the time the system is delivered to me. And then as I said, it takes us only about two weeks to actually install 
install the airplane. So your downtime is only gonna be a couple of weeks. All right, so it's time to wrap up this video. Really appreciate you watching it uh, and would certainly appreciate it if you would like the video and uh, follow our channel, helps our YouTube channel grow. And we'll do some more fun content like this in the future. Uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon. God bless.